Okay, welcome to our quick review of uh, theories of spatial interaction. And really we're going to talk about two key ideas here. And the first one we're going to talk about is the gravity model. And gravity model, I want you to think, it's a lot like gravity in science class. Okay? And in science class what you learned about gravity is that objects that have more mass exert more force on other objects and that the distance between objects matters. In other words, the further apart objects are, the less force they exert on each other. Okay, so I want you to think that way about this. But we're going to take it, we're going to apply it to geography, and we're going to talk about it in terms of population and people. Okay, so areas that have larger populations have more pull, have more gravity, than areas of smaller populations, right? New York City exerts significantly more influence than Fargo, North Dakota, on pretty much anywhere in the world, even places that are close to Fargo. Okay? Um, and by the same token, though, Seattle has a lot more influence on Tacoma than it does on, say, Medford, Oregon, or San Francisco, right? Because Seattle is much closer to Tacoma. So again, think of it like like gravity from science class, and this will help you remember it and keep yourself anchored in terms of what it actually means. The other theory we're going to talk about in terms of spatial interaction is we're going to talk about time-space convergence. It, and um, in general, it takes time and space for ideas and innovations to move from place to place, right? It takes time for them to move. It, they have to move across space. But what time-space convergence dictates is that with the advent of modern technologies, things like cell phones, the internet, um, the distances in time and space have shrunk, especially over the course of the 20th century and into the 21st, exponentially. So as to be, especially in developed societies, but even in less developed societies, um, essentially meaningless. Meaning that, for example, um, you know, Kate Middleton can marry Prince William, and two hours later, a factory in New York, so um, Princess Catherine and, and Prince William, of course, married in London, but you know, two hours later, a factory in New York can be churning out identical gowns to what she wore for her wedding to be selling to brides here in the U.S. Right? So it's essentially that time, that space is meaningless. It used to be that it would take, at best, six or eight weeks for an idea to travel from London to New York. Right? That's at best. We're talking about, you know, the 1700s. Okay? Increasingly, that time and that space has gotten smaller, so that it, it really means nothing. Um, those are our two big theories in terms of how places interact spatially. We'll keep coming back to them. Um, we'll come back to the gravity model. When we're talking about population. We'll come back to time-space convergence when we're talking about development. When we're talking about culture um, and as we're talking about the ways in which ideas and things spread. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to come see me.